you have been buried with Christ in baptism, through which you also rose again, by faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who through the regenerating power of baptism have been pleased to confer on us heavenly life, grant we pray that those you render capable of immortality by justifying them may, by your guidance, attain the fullness of glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul reached also Derby and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews of that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go on into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words. Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is good. He made us his we are, his people, the flock he tends. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, 
realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the Lord, sorry, if you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. One of the greatest obstacles and challenges that any Christian has to overcome, somebody striving to be a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, is what in pop culture today they call FOMO, the fear of missing out. And it is precisely this fear of missing out that leads many people astray into a pseudo-Christian life, which is more secular than Christ-focused. And the reason this happens is because they desperately need the approval and the praises and sort of the, the proclamations of, of, or sort of the self-esteem building up of the people around them. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, why do we care what they think of us? It's one thing to be a belligerent jerk, like that's never okay, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. But it's another thing when we seek the approval of people who do not know Jesus Christ and his teachings and do not possess the grace of God. They are literally not children of God. They are mere creatures of God because they have not received the gift of baptism. With what criteria do they have that they are qualified to judge the church or the children of the living God by divine adoption? The answer is none. And at the end of the day, too, when it comes to seeking approval even within the church, Again, this can be a very dangerous thing because people have to have an informed conscience in order for their opinion really to matter. Because unless they are informed in shape in light of the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the reality that is God himself, they live in darkness. And their own opinion is going to be skewed and guided by the spirit of the world in the desires of the flesh. And so this is how we come to that great understanding of why Scripture warns us about passing judgment. Oh, that's a terrible person. Oh, that person's wonderful. They're great. I was just recently having a conversation with some friends today, and they were saying, oh, this person's wonderful. He gives all this money to charity. And it's like, well, and his organization is actively trying to sterilize the African population through artificial contraception. The appearance of goodness, but evil can be present and creep in. So what are you and I called to do? First and foremost, to take the advice of St. Francis of Assisi, the advice that he gave to all of his brothers um, while he was still amongst them, an advice that exists and that we should listen to even today. He told his brothers, you are only what you are in the sight of God, regardless of what people think of you. Because again, God knows you and me perfectly. He knows us more intimately than simply knowing us as we are right now or even atomically. He knows every last thing about us because he's quite literally sustaining every last thing about us in existence. It's his power, his love, that gives you and I existence. 
And therefore, as God is omniscient, meaning he is all-knowing, he cannot be duped like you and I can. You and I can even dupe ourselves to thinking either too highly or too poorly of ourselves. And so the key to living the life of discipleship is going to be a life of humility. It's going to be a life by which you and I strive through a life of prayer and penance and almsgiving to know who we are in the sight of God. And then that will be the criteria for us trying to know ourselves. Because if you and I go off of the opinions of other people and we take that as the law of the land, we might never truly come to know who we are in the, as, as we are in the sight of God. So let us ask the Lord to reveal this knowledge to us. And let us strive to live our lives solely for Him. Because nobody suffers from FOMO, that is the fear of missing out, more than the souls and the angels in hell. For they, for all eternity, will know that they have missed out on the greatest gift, eternal life with God in heaven. May God bless us this day and always. Taking comfort in the Lord's mercy, let us offer to him our prayers and petitions. For those who are discerning a vocation to the service of the church through priesthood and religious life, may the Holy Spirit's gift of fortitude and wisdom guide them in their decision-making. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, may the Lord help them face the challenges of their duties with patience and discretion and prudence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family members experiencing discord, may their hearts be open to the light of Christ and bring them reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people gathered uh, virtually here today, May the Lord make known his will for them as they seek their lives, meaning, and purpose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcomed into paradise by the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the mothers living deceased whose names we have on the envelopes that we pray for this week, throughout the month of May. May they have all that they need provided to them by the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, for these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we bring to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, I pray for them that they may be one in us so that the world may believe it was you who sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, Pray for us. St. John the Evangelist, pray for us.